the genes uh, are encoded into a sequence of nucleic acid, and these reside on a very long strand of DNA. So that's the basis of the genetic information that we carry and that we inherit from our parents. But the DNA is not naked in our cells. Um, it's uh, surrounded and, and protected and organized by a set of proteins and nucleic acid that forms this very complex structure called the chromatin. The chromatin really um, is regulating the way genes are expressed by um, enabling certain areas of the genome to be accessible and also by interacting with transcription factors and all sorts of regulators of gene expression. People who've been studying uh, chromatin and gene regulation uh, realized uh, relatively recently um, that there is information not only on the DNA itself, but also on the chromatin. And in particular, uh, some essential uh, constituent of the chromatin called histone, the histone molecules, uh, in around which the DNA is uh, uh, enrolled, um, are themselves carrying some information by being modified uh, as part of networks of gene regulation. And uh, David Alice, in particular, uh, was uh, instrumental in identifying histone modifications that, in turn, affect very strongly the ability of a gene to be transcribed or modulate the ability to be transcribed. So some histone modification help to silence a gene or repress its expression, and some other histone modification seems to be associated with uh, an, an upregulation of, of the expression of that particular gene. Now, what are these, all these marks good for? Well, one idea is that um, when a cell is encountering a particular signal in its, in, in its environment, it wants to keep some type of cellular memory and change maybe its metabolism accordingly. So that's the field of chromatin biology, is to try to understand the relationship between the environment and gene expression and the chromatin in general. So where is the brain here? Well, if you think about the brain, the role of the brain in large part is to respond to the environment and to, um, to learn from its environment. So every neuron uh, wants to have uh, its function to be modulated by past experience. So there is here something very uh, similar or parallel in terms of uh, process. A cell wants to learn from its environment and change its chromatin. The brain want also is a learning machine. And so um, molecular neuroscientists have recently uh, postulated that neurons in the brain could be using some of these essential mechanisms to modify chromatin to in turn modulate the function of neurons. This is a relatively recent field, and so we are mainly right now at what I would say, what I would call an observational phase. It has been observed that uh, mutants or molecules that are involved in neuronal memory, in brain learning, uh, some of them are chromatin constituent. And I think Eric Kandel was among the uh, first scientists to indeed involve some of this chromatin machinery into the phenomenon of neuronal learning and, and, um, and memory in the brain. Moreover, uh, there are a number of key uh, molecules involved in chromatin biology uh, that uh, were found to be responsible for um, some uh, mental disorders and, and neurological dysfunction. So again, there is this relationship between uh, the chromatin and brain function. So it seems to be the case that um, when a neuron is excited, then there are all sorts of changes occurring at the level of the synapses. But some changes also are, or some signals are sent to the nucleus. 
and leading in turn to changes in the chromatin that will affect gene expression for short term, medium term, and, and probably even long term. So what is the molecular basis of memory? Some of it could be residing in the chromatin. I've been speaking only about uh, histone modification, but there are all sorts of other changes of the chromatin or the DNA. For example, uh, uh, the uh, methylation of some bases of some nucleotides uh, uh, methylcytosine, for example, could be a vector of uh, some form of, of uh, epigenetic changes in neurons. And more recently, uh, 5-hydroxymethylcytosine, so a slightly different form of methylated basis, also has been involved in brain function. So, as I mentioned, we are to a large extent mainly right now at an observ observational phase, which is that scientists um, put neurons or brain in specific context of stress, for example, or, um, or, or, or firing uh, regimes, and then they look at how the chromatin changes. And then they correlate changes in neuronal function with these changes in chromatin. But uh, we really uh, lack the direct proof uh, that these changes are mechanistically involved in, uh, in memory, in learning. And this is very difficult to do. If you're working with, let's say, fibroblast or muscle cell, you can observe them into a dish and you can do all sorts of manipulation that will prove a direct functional link between a change and then the change in cellular properties. But here you're dealing with the neuron and more complicated. You're dealing with a set of neurons organized in a particular area of the brain. And so experiments are much more difficult to do. And we're really lacking some of the tools to you know, precisely change one of these um, uh, chromatin modification and, and see what's happening to brain function. Uh, we are getting there. There are all sorts of new genetic engineering that enable or will enable uh, uh, those studies to be performed. But these are still at the level of hypothesis. They are fascinating hypotheses because if indeed um, some basis of learning and memory reside in chromatin changes, one could imagine to um, uh, develop specific drugs that would help uh, the mechanism of learning and memory by acting specifically on those changes. And there are in fact all sort of uh, drug development or assays of drug development that uh, are inspired by this line of research. So the question is, you know, why are we not uh, moving forward? Why are we not um, doing these mechanistic experiments uh, right away or immediately, right now? What we lack are specific uh, drugs, specific reagents. And those reagents could be molecules like drugs or they could be uh, experimental strategies. I guess the, the key puzzle is that these chromatin changes occur throughout the genome. They, go, they can affect every single gene, but they don't. They affect only specific genes. And what we really don't understand is how is the cell able to select which genes will be modified by uh, a specific histone change, for example, or, or DNA methylation. So what we're lacking really are the ability to um, target a specific gene and say, oh, if I change the histones around that specific genes into another type of modification, what will happen to the entire function of the cell? We don't know how to do that. We have reagents that can affect that particular histone modification throughout the genome, but to a particular gene, we, we don't know how to do this. So, some people are right now in their labs inventing new strategies and hopefully some of those will work and we will be able to move forward in a more mechanistic sense. The future of the field is uh, probably 
enormous. I mean, it's a bet right now that this histone modification or DNA methylation are uh, not only highly dynamic and highly regulated, but they are functionally extremely important. Just to understand how the brain works, uh, this is a fundamental part of the brain, the nucleus of all the neurons. How do they change? And uh, can we see the fluctuation of gene expression associated with different states of the brain? So from a basic standpoint, this is just one large part of understanding how the brain works. And uh, the aspect that is immediately related to this is if we understand um, some aspect of brain function, we can also hopefully um, understand better the origin of some mental disorders. <music>